The company behind the Japanese rocket that exploded yesterday has refused to describe it as a failure. No one was reported hurt and the firm, Space One, says the crash gave it new data and another challenge. Our Asia correspondent, Sash Butler, filed this report. Few silver linings came out of the explosion that wrecked Space One's Kairos rocket yesterday, but company president Masakazu Toyoda is casting it as a learning opportunity. Space One had hoped to be the first private Japanese company to put a satellite into orbit till their rocket self-destructed after launch. Exactly why is unclear. The rocket had no crew, no one was reported injured, and the fires were put out. Toyota says engineers are looking into what went wrong and they'd learn from their mistakes. Approximately five seconds after liftoff, measures were taken to suspend the flight. A task force has been set up and the cause is under investigation. The explosion is a blow for the company and for Japan's private space sector as it works to meet rising demand for launches from the government and private firms alike. Shares in several of Space One's owners dropped after yesterday's crash, but the firm has given no sign yet of putting future launches on hold. And joining us with more live now is Fred Watson, Australia's astronomer at large. Fred, good to see you saying this wasn't a failure, that there are silver linings. It's a pretty optimistic spin on things. I mean, the pictures of that explosion were remarkable. They were. I loved all the pieces coming back to Earth. I hope nobody was standing underneath them. But um, I think uh, this is perhaps one of the things that characterises uh, the, the, the private sector engaging in space launches uh, exactly like this one, uh, that they can afford to experiment in a way to regard uh, failures like this as being valuable for the lessons that they've learned. Uh, and so my guess is that we will see Space One, the company that, uh, to, that took that step uh, to, to, to launch this rocket, we'll see them revisiting the program and actually succeeding in getting a spacecraft into orbit. Because this is a real trend, isn't it, Fred, seeing private companies involved with this sort of work? Absolutely. Uh, it goes back, actually, more than a decade. 2011 was when NASA declared that they were going to change their mode of operation so that, for example, for getting astronauts up and down to the International Space Station, they wouldn't use their own high-tech, high-powered rockets. They would basically uh, use a taxi service to get up there. And, in fact, um, SpaceX is one of the, was one of the successful uh, contenders for that deal, and they have been very, very prolific in sending uh, astronauts up and down to the International Space Station. Uh, that trend continues. Uh, one of the other stories that we might talk about this afternoon is SpaceX's uh, test run for the Starship space rocket launch, which is scheduled, I think, currently for tomorrow. Yeah, tell us a bit more about that. So, yes, they've. Uh, this is the vision of Elon Musk and his SpaceX company to build a, a rocket and a, and a space vehicle that would be capable of taking people to Mars. And that is a hugely ambitious step. And it has resulted in a hugely ambitious spacecraft. When it's set for launch, it is 122 metres high, bigger actually than the old uh, Saturn V rockets that took the Apollo astronauts to the moon. Uh, he has had two uh, failed flights with this space vehicle so far, one a year ago and one uh, late last year. This will be the third attempt. Uh, the hopes are that all the problems have been now cured and that we will have a flawless flight. Uh, it is uncrewed, there's nobody on board, but it will test out the systems of this gigantic, truly gigantic rocket ship. Yeah, we'll have to be watching that one closely and, and see how they go. Hopefully better luck than the Japanese uh, one we saw yesterday. I did want to ask you about another image that has emerged recently. It's a remarkable picture that's generated by a dark energy camera. We'll bring it up and show our viewers and just get you to explain here what, what we are looking at. I was going to say, what on earth are we looking at? But this is not on earth. <laughs> Yeah, what in space are we looking at? We're looking at a, an explosion that took place 
about 11,000 years ago in the constellation of Vela, a Southern Hemisphere constellation. Vela is the constellation of the sails, S-A-I-L-S, not S-A-L-E-S. Uh, and that constellation houses this object, which was first photographed in colour, in fact, by the telescope that I used to be astronomer in charge of, the biggest uh, optical telescope in Australia, the Anglo-Australian telescope, back in the 1980s, by my colleague David Merlin, who was the person who learned how, or taught the world, how to take uh, true colour images of celestial objects. So we've been looking at that object for a long time. Now we have this marvellous new image taken with a, a high-tech camera, 1.3 gigapixel camera over a very wide field of view, uh, showing the Veil Nebula, uh, sorry, big pardon, the Vela Nebula in all its glory, a beautiful shot of the debris of an explosion that took place all those thousands of years ago. Oh, it is just a stunning image and, and remarkable to try and wrap your head around when you think that it did explode so long ago. Fred Watson, we always appreciate you making the time for us. Thank you.